During this movie, we'll be demonstrating the steps to correctly calibrate and profile a monitor. As photographers, we can appreciate the importance of having a true representation of our photos as they are viewed on our displays. With a profile monitor, our images will be viewed as they truly are and will be able to apply the correct adjustments for our desired result. The lighting condition of our work area will influence how we work with our images and our photographs. For an accurate comparison of photographs to images, we must work in the correct lighting condition. A common problem for many photographers is the amount of light in our computer work area. Many of us may work in a very dim to dark work environment as we process our image files. However, we should not work in a dark room absent of light. Some light in our work area is needed to accurately interpret and adjust our photos. We'll talk more about this later. The standard for viewing our photographs is the D50 daylight balance lighting condition. There are several options we can choose to create the standard lighting condition in our work area. First, we can use a daylight balance light box, such as a GTI or other brand of light box. A second option is to use light bulbs capable of creating a daylight balance lighting condition. However, be aware not all bulbs can accurately create our goal of the standard lighting condition. Instead, we should use only light bulbs specifically designed for this purpose. A third option is to use actual daylight to view our photographs. To use this option, we would use indirect daylight at midday under a clear sky to view our photographs. This is a low-tech option and certainly not ideal for nighttime comparison, but it is an option we can use in a pinch. Later, once we have profiled our display, we will need test prints to compare to on-screen images on the calibrated monitor. Select four or five well-exposed white balance image files for our test prints. As we select the files for our test prints, the images should represent the subject matter, lighting conditions, and locations we typically encounter as we photograph our subjects. Once selected, send images to Miller's and have test prints made without any adjustments or corrections applied to the files. During the process of profiling our display, we'll use a calibration device called a colorimeter. This device will be placed on the front of our monitor to measure colors, adjust the contrast, and set the brightness levels of the display. The end result of this process will be the creation of a monitor profile, a small file our computer's operating system will use. One special point about the monitor profile we will be creating. The profile should be used by the computer's operating system only. The profile should not be embedded into an image file. As we walk through the steps to profile our monitor, we will use a Data Cutter Spider 5 Elite device. The Spider 5 Elite is affordable, easy to use, and is both Macintosh and Windows compatible. Please be aware, there are other devices on the market we can use, such as the X-Rite Color Monkey Photo, the X-Rite i1 Display Pro, or the X-Rite Color Monkey Display. In addition to profiling our monitor, all of these devices will profile not only our desktop and laptop displays, but also large screen televisions and video projectors. Connect a Spider 5 device to our computer via a USB port. As we launch the Spider 5 Elite software, be certain the latest version of the program is in use. Click this icon to open an interactive help panel for each screen in the software. If this is our first time in the Spider 5 Elite software, we will be greeted with a welcome screen. Click the Next button. On the next screen, we will choose a type of workflow for calibrating our monitor. For this demonstration, we will select the Expert Console option by clicking here. Click the Next button. From this window, we can set all of our calibration settings on a single screen. Choose a display to calibrate from the drop down menu. In the Target section, we will set the white point to the 5000 Kelvin option. This setting will achieve the closest print to monitor match with the Miller's printing process. Of course, there are additional white point options we can choose to experiment with. The gamma should be set to the recommended 2.2. In addition, we can choose a 2.2 5000 option from the target drop down menu to set these parameters for us. In the luminance section, we'll control the luminance or brightness of our display. 
we will choose a measured mode option and put the value of 100 in this field as a starting point. Once we have profiled our display, we will compare the on screen images to the test prints we spoke of earlier. As we make our comparison, we may need to modify the luminance value. We will discuss this in more detail later. In the options section, we will place a check mark here to view our images with the calibration turned on. We will leave the room light compensation option unchecked, and from the gray balance calibration drop down menu, we will choose the better option. Place the SpiderFi device on our desktop in front of our monitor. The device should be positioned away from our monitor so the light output from the display doesn't interfere with the sampling of the ambient light. Click the Measure Room button. Ideally, the program will report the light level of our work environment at the moderately low level. Adjust the light level and remeasure by clicking the Measure Room button. Continue adjusting the light level and measuring until the moderately low level is achieved. From the Next Action drop down menu, choose the Full Cal option. Click the Next button. The next screen displays an outline of where to place the SpiderFi device on our monitor. Remove the sensor cover and place it behind the monitor to serve as a counterweight for the device. Tilt the display so the Spider 5 is resting flat against the screen. Click the Next button. The process of calibrating our monitor will begin. The display's brightness will be measured first. Please note, although we cannot physically see the device in this recording, it is placed in the designated area. The on-screen instructions will prompt us to adjust the monitor's brightness to its maximum level. Using the display's brightness controls, set the monitor to its brightest level. Laptops and Mac computers typically have keys on the keyboard to adjust brightness. However, desktop monitors will usually have buttons or dials along the edge of the monitor for brightness adjustment. Click the Continue button. Adjust the monitor's brightness and click the Update button to measure the adjusted level. Continue adjusting and clicking the update until the brightness bar is in a green zone or as close as possible. Please note, once the brightness level is set, the monitor's brightness should only be changed when reprofiling with the Spider software. Click the Continue button. Click the Finish button once measuring is complete. The Save Profile window will be displayed. Input a name for the monitor profile or use a supplied text. Today's date can be added to the profile's name if desired. As we work with the computer, shut down, reboot, restart, etc., this monitor profile will be used to correctly display our images on the monitor. However, over time, our display will drift from its current profile state and require a periodic updating. We can configure the Spire software to remind us when to profile. For most displays, select the once a month interval. Click the Save button. The profile will be saved to the correct location or computer and will be the active and default profile for the display. As we noted earlier, the profile should be used by the computer's operating system only and should not be embedded into an image. Click the Next button. The spider proof window will be displayed. Click the switch button to toggle between calibrated and uncalibrated views. Click the next button. The profile overview displays our monitor's profile, compares the profile to several color spaces, and reports the percentage of each color space our monitor is capable of displaying. Click the quit button when finished. When it is time to reprofile our monitor, the Spider 5 Elite software will display the welcome screen once again. Choose the Expert console from the drop down menu here. Again, we'll see the options discussed earlier. For periodic reprofiling, choose the Recal option from the Next Action drop down menu here. Choose the Full Cal option to completely redo the profile of our display. Click the Next button and proceed through the steps as before. We will use Adobe Photoshop to view our test images and compare to our non corrected photographs we spoke of earlier. In Photoshop, select the Color Settings option from the Edit menu. 
the color settings dialog will be displayed. In the Working Spaces section, choose the sRGB IEC 61966-2.1 option from the RGB pull-down menu. In the Color Manager Policy section, select the Convert to Working RGB option from the RGB pull-down menu. And finally, place a check mark in the three check boxes here for profile mismatches and missing profiles. Click OK to close the Color Settings dialog. The last step is to compare test prints to images on our calibrated and profiled monitor. Locate the test prints we spoke of earlier. Load the images we sent for test prints into Adobe Photoshop. Compare the non-corrected test prints to the test images displayed on our profile monitor. Our goal is for the two to match as closely as possible. Please note, as we view the prints and images, we'll be comparing a backlit image to a frontlit print. As noted earlier, it is critically important to view the non-corrected photographs under a daylight condition for an accurate print to monitor comparison. Compare all the non-corrected test prints to all the test images and consider how they compare overall. If the images and prints don't match, we will need to modify our calibration settings and reprofile our display. If the images viewed on our monitor are brighter than the photographs, adjust the luminance setting in the Spider 5 Elite software to a lower value. We use a starting point of 100, select a lower luminance value, and reprofile the display. Likewise, if the images viewed on our monitor are darker than the photographs, select a higher luminance value and reprofile the display. Again, be certain to not adjust the monitor's brightness, contrast, or color settings without the use of the colorimeter and its software.